Hello, I am Sam Maji Morgenstern, and these are my adventures in time. Welcome to the life of Qin Shi Huangdi. This video will be the first in a series on various people throughout history. This will document the rapid rise and fall of the Qin Dynasty and why this happened. There is no definitive person to blame, and what happened comes from a wide variety of causes. Now, before we go on, we must be careful about our subject's reputation beyond the grave and how he fell into the tropes of Chinese history as a ruthless ruler struck down by heaven. This mainly comes from Confucianism. Good ruler equals strong state so long as respect for ancestors is maintained. This was certainly the argument put forth by Sima Tian in his records of the Grand Historian, a.k.a. Shi Ji. He was writing during the succeeding Western Han Dynasty, which lasted from 206 BCE to 9 CE. He is obligated by his job as Emperor Wu Di's court historian to portray Qin Shi Huangdi in a negative light to assert the legitimacy of the Han Dynasty. Therefore, Qin's actions were possibly exaggerated to justify the end of his dynasty. However, it should also be noted that Sima Qian could also be critical of his Han patrons. Qin Shi Huangdi was born Yin Zheng in the state of Qin around 260 BCE. He became the king of Qin upon the death of his father in 247 BCE at the age of 13. Much of the boy's early reign was dominated by his minister Lu Bu Wei, the man who had brought King Yin Zheng's mother Zhao Ji to the Qin court. Sima Qian writes the claim that Lu Bu Wei fathered Ying Zheng, but this has been disputed. Apparently, Minister Wei had been distancing himself from the new king to ensure that the boy would not discover this. Wei brought in Lao Ai to keep Zhao Ji company, and the couple had two sons. Lao Ai was disguised as a eunuch, and that meant that he was uncastrated. When the king briefly left the court at the age of 19, Lao Ai raised a revolt with the secret help of Lu Bu Wei, but he was defeated by royal forces. Lao Ai was courted by a horse for treason, and Zhao Ji was put under house arrest. Her sons were assassinated, and Lu Bu Wei poisoned himself, when he was also implicated in the plot. At the age of 19, Ying Zheng had control of one of the greatest states in China and appointed Li Si as prime minister. China had been plagued by division for centuries and had been waging continuous civil wars since the death of Confucius in 475 BCE. The Zhou King of China only held symbolic power of the seven states known as Qi, Qin, Chu, Han, Yan, and Zhao. Each state had armies numbering in the hundreds of thousands and spent centuries perfecting the art of war. Ying Zheng ruled over the westernmost state, which meant that their armies were placed in near constant action against the various nomadic tribes of the Central Asian steppes. This led to Qin's widespread use of crossbows, a weapon considered by Sun Tzu to be the best weapon against the cavalry charge. Furthermore, the Qin bureaucracy functioned on the philosophy of legalism, which believed in the absolute rule of the law. This made Qin a ruthless police state with Li Si and Ying Zheng at the head. In battle after battle, the Qin defeated the other warring states. Even all the states fighting together was not enough, and Qi was the last state to fall, bowing out in 221 BCE. These conquests were not enough for King Ying Zheng, and he conquered the Pearl River Delta as well, laying the foundations for the region's trading economy. Ying Zheng declared himself his first emperor, taking on the name Qin Shi Huangdi. This title was an homage to Huangdi, the mythical ancestor of the Han people. Over the course of 11 years, the government unified all law codes and currency, turning coins shaped like shaving razors into circular coins. Confucian scholars disagreed with Li Si's legalism, leading to the minister and the emperor enforcing a ban on their philosophy. This led to the government burning Confucian books and burying Confucian scholars alive. The law system became increasingly draconian, with even the smallest crimes being condemned by mutilation, hard labor, and execution. The government also abolished all noble houses and divided the country into 36 commanderies, which were further divided into counties. This was to prevent the country from being divided by greedy nobles, such as during the Zhou dynasty. The government also conscripted the masses into building projects, such as the Imperial Palace in Xi'an, the Grand Canal, and the Great Wall. It should be noted that the Great Wall today is different from the Ming Dynasty and that Qin Shi Huang's wall was fundamentally different. The wall was mostly composed of loose earth with twig bundles or stones as the core. Legend has it that this wall even contained the corpses of some of its workers, although no proof of this has ever been found. The Lao Ai Ku planted the seed of paranoia in the first emperor and his feelings were confirmed as he survived three attempts on his life. The first involved two masters from Yan, including one Jin Ke, who attempted to stab him with a dagger concealed in a map, but the emperor cut them down in 227 BCE. In the second attempt, their bestie, Gao Dian Li, tried to kill the emperor with a loot weighed down by lead, but he missed and was executed. In the third attempt, in 218 BCE, a Han aristocrat named Zhang Liang hired an assassin to hurl a giant cone at the emperor's carriage. The ambush failed by hitting a spare carriage, and the two assassins escaped despite a massive manhunt. 
The emperor took measures throughout his reign to become immortal with the aid of his alchemists, who usually prescribed pills filled with mercury, a metal revered as the messenger and communicator between the mortal and spiritual realms. These pills were supposed to keep Qin Shi Huang alive until Peng Lai, the Chinese undying lands, was found. However, they only poisoned him and ruined his mind. The emperor's paranoia was likely the cause behind the lavish furnishings of his tomb in Xi'an. The tomb included a large army of individually designed terracotta soldiers armed to the teeth, booby tramps equipped with crossbows, and a map of his empire that had its rivers made of mercury. While the map remains undiscovered to this day, the soil above his tomb has an unusually high level of mercury, lending some credence to the legends. The terracotta army was discovered by Chinese peasants looking for water and provided a treasure trove of information about warfare in this period. Qin Shi Huang died of mercury poisoning 210 BCE while still searching for Pang Lai. His eldest son was assassinated by the Qin court out of fear for his similarities to his father. The fourth son, Hu Hai, ascended as Ar Shu Huangdi, but the dynasty did not last long after the death of the first emperor. As the peasant revolt spread across the empire and the dynasty was overthrown in 206 BCE, the Han dynasty led by the minor official Liu Bang rose in its place. Sources are in the description. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.